evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Jack Douglas. There is something mystic and appealing about swampland country. And tonight we're going to visit two of America's most famous swamplands, Okefenokee in Georgia and the bayous of Louisiana. This is your armchair vacation and mine to the big swamp, the big bayou. Okefenokee has many claims to fame. Among them, it is the headwaters of the Suwannee River, but vacationers expect more, and they get it. Listen to the noted historian and Okefenokee expert, Mr. Liston Elkins, talking to our producer, Bill Southworth. We like to think of Okefenokee, one of the most beautiful and entrancing wilderness areas in America, as a place where people can enjoy life and relax and enjoy the wonders of nature. It isn't a horrible, terrible, a uh, fearsome place that a lot of people think, and that's the general attitude toward a swamp country. Uh, it is full of beauty, uh, full of charm. There's no animal, uh, no formation, no insect, nothing in the swamp that's gonna do you a lot of damage. It's the safest place I know to be. It's the uh, headwaters of the famous Swanee River, which Stephen Collins Foster immortalized in his famous folk song, Old Folks at Home. We love to think that people can come to Okefenokee and really enjoy the wonders of nature. Well, Bill decided to see for himself. His guide is Johnny Hickox, a lovable character who knows Okefenokee as you and I know our own names. Now, as you cruise through this majestic swampland, your mood changes with each mile. At first, you're inclined to be spellbound by the awesome size of it, 660 square miles. And then you may be terrified, even panic-stricken, wondering how Johnny can ever find his way out. But after a few minutes, you just relax and enjoy the splendor of one of America's largest swamps. Tell me, Johnny, what does Okefenokee actually mean? The uh, word Okefenokee is an Indian word meaning land of trembling earth. Uh, I believe I can show you better than I could answer that question. Uh, you notice this island here, fixing to get out on, is, is that float. Uh, what this is is matted vegetation, which have accumulated here year after year. And, uh, Got so thick here till this vegetation will grow on it, these trees and things. Uh, you see how this shakes back when you walk on it? Occasionally you fall through here. Uh, this is why this is called Okefenokee. As they, like I say, the Indian word meaning land of trembling earth. This is uh, a pitcher plant found here in the swamp. Uh, you notice here on the top of the plant has a little lip over it and it's shaped just about like a water pitcher. Now this is one of the few plants here in the swamp that actually live on insects. Uh, let's see if I can pull one of these out. Now, the insects comes into the plant up here and uh, get, gets trapped in here. Here's another interesting plant uh, called the golden club. Uh, the old timers gave this plant uh, the name of Neville Wet. You notice you take one of the leaves here and dip it down into the water and see how the water all rolls off of it. It's, it's always dry. Here's a very interesting plant found here in the Okefenokee Swamp. Uh, this is called the soap bush. Uh, let me show you how this works. Strip off some of the leaves and uh, see if I can get a ladder here worked up for you. Uh, the old timers call this poor man soap. Uh, you notice here you get, get a pretty good ladder. Uh, probably the old timers get in here and want to wash their hands. Well, they had the soap right here in the swamp with them. Yes, soapy suds from the leaf of a bush. Oh, there are hundreds of fascinating things to see at Okefenokee. For example, this is the sundew plant a water plant that sort of secretes a sticky substance which in turn entraps insects. 
And as for the lovely water lilies, well, you could, if you had the time, count them by the millions in this unspoiled wilderness. Being in a launch with a lot of people is somewhat easier on the nerves. The swamp doesn't seem quite as scary with people about. Haffer Trail takes us to the source of the Swanee River, immortalized in Stephen Foster's classic, Old Folks at Home. This sign always gets a chuckle to Fargo and all points south, if you know how. Well, the wise old Bart Owl probably knows how, but he's not much on conversation. He spends most of his time watching swamp spiders spinning webs. Or the clucking owl keeps a sharp eye peeled for gators, alligators all over the place. Now, frankly, I don't think that even the park officials know how many alligators there are in these 660 square miles. However, while the gators are certainly ugly creatures, they're not nearly as ferocious as crocodiles, and really, there's no danger involved. But just to play it safe, the guides carry loaves of bread aboard each launch and toss slices all along the way, just to keep the gators happy. Johnny's passengers are in for a jolt. These grisly reminders of what can happen in a swampland tell us that we're at Skull Lake. Yes, this sign is upside down, but in the waters of Mirror Lake, it reads right side up. These graceful tall trees are also reflected in the water, but the water lilies are actually growing beneath the surface of the shallow lake. This 80-foot observation tower is one of many under construction, and here, without the slightest exertion, except climbing up, you can look out over miles of timber, and looking below, you can study the habits of swamp pets, such as George the egret. Now, George is probably the most widely photographed egret in America. The Serpentarium at Okefenokee has the expected variety of serpents, among them the yellow rat snake, the pine bull puff adder, the indigo or gopher snake, and the king snake, which is not poisonous, but attacks and kills poisonous snakes. Now, frankly, I get shaky just watching pictures of these things, but the Serpentarium has more to offer, quite a show. For example, a show in which Johnny Hickox tosses fish bait to a red-breasted chicken hawk, which will swoop down and try to catch the food in midair while in flight. This is slow motion. Yes, that was a miss, but watch this streamlined action. The hawk will catch the food with its claws. Again, slow motion. And here's another successful try. The hawks are actually so fast that if we did not use slow motion, we'd never see the action. Here's another favorite of all visitors to Okefenokee, Blackie the Black American Bear, and he's a cutie, watch. Okefenokee has been the actual setting for many Hollywood movies, and obviously small dinghies or rowboats have been used in these films, such as Lure of the Wilderness with Jeff Hunter, Gene Peters, and Walter Brennan. Swamp Water is probably the best known of the films made at Okefenokee, and it starred Dana Andrews, and Baxter, and again, Walter Brennan. Well, we spent 10 days in this water wilderness, and saw perhaps 10% of it. But even a shorter visit, just a single day, will leave you with indelible impressions. The reaction of vacationers like the Blackburns is typical. This is Blackburn. How do you like the Okefenokee Swamp? 
I think the swamp is one of the most worthwhile things on the Atlantic coast. It's the one place that we can see nature in action, just like it used to be. Mr. Blackburn, what is your opinion of the Okefenokee Swamp? Well, I thoroughly enjoyed the Okefenokee Swamp Park. I've been in 40 states this year, and I've visited most of the attractions in the United States. I consider this one of the outstanding, if not the outstanding, natural attraction in this country. For those who can stay overnight, Okefenokee is an especially rewarding experience. It is silent, serene, and to use just one word, we're flying over the southern part of the state of Louisiana, and this is Bayou Country. The word Bayou, the Choctaw Indian word, by the way, is Bayou, means small stream or a marshy inlet. And there are so many streams and inlets here that as far as the eye can see, the bayou appears to be a forest flooded with water, and yet this is not a true swampland. The early Acadian settlers called the bayous dead streams, but this was erroneous. There isn't a single stream or river that cannot be navigated by some form of boat or pirogue. That isn't a swamp fire down below, merely excess burning gas from an oil refinery. New Orleans is, for the majority of vacationers, the gateway to the bayou country. And don't worry about being able to afford a helicopter. There are excellent riverboat cruises aboard the Voyager, which is docked just a few blocks from downtown New Orleans. The Voyager is a 64-foot diesel-powered steel boat that leaves the Toulouse Street dock at about 10 a.m. and returns at 3 in the afternoon, a five-hour round-trip bayou cruise for just a few dollars. More burning gas at a refinery. The Voyager leaves the Mississippi at the Algiers locks and once through the locks, the course is south and slightly west into the bayou country by way of the Algiers Canal. Now these locks are necessary because the canal is from one to three feet below the level of the Mississippi. Within minutes after clearing the locks, we're in bayou country, mile after mile of cypress, oak, and Spanish moss. Now notice as we pass a few isolated houses that they're built on pilings as a safeguard against bayou floods. Indian Mound Cemetery is the ancient burial ground of the French and Cajun settlers and their descendants. Cajun is the abbreviated vernacular for Acadian, and as we know, Acadia in Nova Scotia was the original home of many French Canadians who were deported in 1755 and found a new way of life in the bayous of Louisiana. And today, more than two centuries later, the Cajun influence dominates bayou country just as in New Orleans, the flavor is decidedly Creole. But now let's disembark. We'll leave the Voyager and set out on our own. And here, as at Okefenokee, there are lovely secluded little spots which make it easy to understand why the Cajuns came and did not leave this watery wonderland. To own a shrimp boat such as these at Morgan City well, that's every Bayou boy's idea of heaven on earth. Like their Cajun forebears who were forced out of Nova Scotia, these people are a fishing people, and fish is as much a staple of their diet as French bread. We cruised some of the inlets with Mr. Paul Hebert, a localite who promised that we would catch lots and lots of fish. Well, as it turned out, Paul did the fishing and we gave him a few laughs with our high school French. Mostly they fish here for white perch and bass, but if an eel takes the bait, Paul won't throw it back. You'll see many families, mom and dad and the kids, fishing the bayou streams and marshes. Togetherness isn't something they work at, it's a part of their life. And here's another familiar sight, a man rowing a bateau. And in this upright position, he claims he can row all day without tiring 
because you see he pushes against the oars instead of pulling them. These men are trappers and when the game is scarce, they'll hunt for this giant sized edible mushroom most commonly found on the bark of the willow tree. They told us that the trapping had been fairly good of late and these were nutrifers drying and curing on the line. This old cabin was restored by Mrs. Virginia Kyle purely for nostalgic reasons on the back lawn of her home. And chatting with Mrs. Kyle, our Bill Southworth asked her about voodoo in the Bayou country. Well, Bill, voodoo is still very much alive in the Bayou country. It started out as a casual hobby and has ended up as a very fascinating research project. I have uncovered some of these trinkets and powders this feather brushed in your path will bring you good luck. This snake skin will give you power over someone. The salt spread in the corners of your room will keep out the evil spirits. Black eyed peas are for good luck. And if you pour this brick dust over your steps, no enemy can cross them. Then I have this wonderful one here, follow me man. If uh, someone is after a lover, they merely have to wear this and the man will follow them. We also have the fast luck powder in case you need a little quick luck along the way. And then we have this string with the seven knots that they wear around their middles to cure any stomach distress or heart trouble, backache. The cork on there has a very special significance because held on the third string, it will stop nosebleed. And then I have this get together powder which I'd like to sprinkle on you so that you will someday return to the bar country. From voodoo talk, let's turn to the gaiety of a Mardi Gras rehearsal. Well, it's not the Mardi Gras in New Orleans, but the women's organization of Kaplan in Vermilion Parish is every bit as proud of its Mardi Gras as the folks in the big city. The purpose of this annual regalia is to preserve the old Acadian customs and traditions of the bayou. The plates and the shoots of rice, for example, symbolize the home. The French demi-tasse cup and saucer symbolize friendship shared over a cup of coffee, etc. This was merely a costume rehearsal for Queen Jambalaya, King Gumbo, and members of their court. They urged us to stay for the real Mardi Gras, but our time was limited and we couldn't accept their gracious invitation. At the small city of Rain, known as the frog capital of the world, we were invited to yet another rehearsal. Now this one involved four beauty queens and the fattest, sassiest frogs I've ever seen. These bayou frogs, highly regarded by gourmets the world over, averaged more than a pound and a half each. Anyway, this was a training rehearsal for the International Frog Derby, and the beauty queens are the jockeys. No, they don't take to the whip as in racing. They just prod the frogs with their footsies. Now, three of the frogs did admirably, but if this one doesn't show some interest, he's going to wind up at Jacques Wiles to be shipped to a gourmet's table, perhaps Harris. They say that if you can't speak French, you will before you leave the bayou. And like it or not, even the telephone company is best known by its French designation. This moss-covered complex of old buildings is not a deserted plantation. It is a factory, a factory sustained by these acres and acres of red peppers. And I mean red, hot, burning peppers. And this factory on Avery Island in the bayous is one of the world's leading suppliers of Tabasco sauce. Now, three to five years after the peppers have been hand-picked and fermented, a vinegar base is added and each barrel is stirred eight hours a day for five weeks. Then, modern machinery takes over. Avery Island's most prominent citizen, E.A. McElhaney, created the famous Jungle Gardens, 200 acres of sanctuary for man and beast. This Chinese garden is merely a small section of the overall landscape. And the temple, by the way, enshrines a Buddha with a fantastic cops and robbers history. 
a history dating back to the 12th century, the jungle gardens at Avery Island. This above all homes is the pride of the Bayou country. This is Shadows on the Tesh, built between 1831 and 1834 by a wealthy planter, David Weeks. Now after the war between the states, the shadows and its exquisite gardens were almost totally neglected until the end of World War I. There's much more to the story, and you'll hear it, and you'll feel it, when you visit the Tesh Bayou. St. Martinville is one of those places that our program calls a must for every vacationer to Louisiana and the bayous. In the courtyard of this handsome church, by the bank of a glassy, smooth stream, you can sit and let time pass by in the shadows of the Evangeline Oak, the meeting place of Evangeline and Gabriel, immortalized in Longfellow's classic poem. The real-life Evangeline, Emmeline was her name, is buried here, and you may wish to donate a coin for the maintenance of her resting place. Just a few feet from the oak tree, you'll see this statue to Longfellow's Evangeline, a statue donated by one of her most devout admirers, the actress Dolores Del Rio. Church Point in the bayous is a place we'll never forget. The parishioners say goodbye to the priest and then climb aboard their horse-drawn buggies for the trip back home from church. Yes, this is a rural community, but that isn't the answer. It is simply a matter of custom and a stubborn desire to cling to the old ways. You know, about 20 years ago, oil was discovered in this area, and car salesmen poured in to sell the oil-rich farmers shiny new cars. Well, the salesmen struck out. The oil-happy farmers bought shiny new buggies. Yes, they do have cars, but when they go to church, they prefer the horse and buggy carriage. It's a sure sign that the present does not always wish to forget the past. These are country people in the bayous, and they like just about everything country style, including their music and dancing.